And hello everyone and welcome to what is the final episode of The Longest Journey. Yes, it's been a long one definitely, but we're at the very end of it today and well, we're going to see if April can restore the guardianship and solve the balance between the worlds of Stark and Arcadia. Uh, if you remember last time, she had made it to the Morningstar space station, freed Adrian, the former guardian, and they had left in spacesuits and passed through the wormhole into the guardian's realm, but they were pursued by Gordon Holloway, so apparently their troubles aren't quite over yet. So let's catch up with April and Adrian and let's finish up the longest journey. And here we are on the Guardian's planet in the Guardian's realm. And that looks like that was not the best landing, April, but hey, any landing you walk away from. Anybody here? Doesn't look that way. Compared to this place, Arcadia was about as alien as my bedroom. Blue sand. Never seen that outside of a Picasso. Okay, there's really not much we can do here. We can look at the tower. That must be the Guardian's Tower. It's either very small or very far away, and from what I know of the balance, it doesn't settle for economy sized. I think I'm in for a long walk. Yeah, probably April. Uh, all we can do at this point is walk, so let's head on out into the desert. And we're not much closer, are we? Towers There's the second here. pod, but I don't see... Adrian! He's not in here, so he must have survived the landing, but where is he? Adrian? Adrian! Looks like you're on your own, April. Um, again, the tower is still off here in the distance. The tower's closer than it was before, so I'm making progress. Very slowly. There's nothing out here. It's completely barren. Which is, if you think about it, a little odd for the place that is supposed to be the home of the balance. You would think it would be more than this desolate wasteland, but whatever. Let's keep on our way. Yes. Oh. God, not that thing again. It's even bigger than before. I thought it couldn't leave Arcadia. I had no idea it could follow me all the way here. All right. You have a little bit of time, but you have to do something here. Take the Find Magic Potion and use it on the Talisman of the Balance. Then take the Talisman of the Balance and use it on the Chaos Vortex. That was easy. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm surprised that works too, April. Now that's not totally a timed sequence, but I think if you take too long to do that, you will eventually get killed by the vortex. But. If I had wings, I could fly across. Now, this Since is... I don't. I'll just have to head back down to the desert and try to find my way around the chasm. Yeah, it's kind of a weird thing that, oh, let's just find another way around. You don't have to do it. It just magically sends you to the other side. But, okay. 
Let's continue towards the tower, which is apparently that way, even though we can't see it. Now we come out to the second trial. What is this? It looks like... home. It's home. It's not... It's like a projection, but it's definitely the kitchen back home. The way it used to look when I was... eight or nine. God, now what's happening to me? What? Who's there? Come here, Pumpkin. I got you something... special. Dad? Daddy? Is that you? Hush, Pumpkin. Come here. Daddy's got something for you. Please, Daddy, don't hurt me. Didn't I say to come here? Come here, right now, bro. Daddy wants to give you something, Pumpkin. Come on. Alright, um, this is again another sequence where you have to do something. What you have to do is you have to take the ring. Remember the ring that April got from her father years ago? And give it to him. Daddy, please, you don't want to hurt me. You're not a bad person. You're not. Really, d don't. I'm not your daddy. I'm not your daddy. You came into our lives and you destroyed us. You took advantage of us. You're a frightful little beast. But daddy, you gave me this. Remember, April said that was the only time he ever you did anything nice You gave this to nice me, Daddy. Her. You do care. You do love me. You're just not very good at it. No. You destroyed us. We were a... a family, and you... God forgive me. What have I done? What have I done to you? You did nothing, Daddy. It wasn't your fault. It wasn't your fault that I got hurt. I... I'd been drinking, and I... She was so beautiful. My little April, you were so beautiful. We wanted to give you a home. We wanted to be what your biological parents couldn't be. A family. That night, when we brought you home, I'd had a few drinks with the guys. I was feeling... feeling a little dizzy, and... And then your mother, she says to me, hold her, hold your baby girl in your arms. And I take you and I hold you and you, you look up at me with such startled eyes like, like it's the first time you see somebody like me. I fell in love with you, my little baby. You were so beautiful. And you smiled at me, and then I... I don't know what happened. But I was, I was taking a step forward, and I stumbled. You fell to the floor. But you didn't cry. You didn't even whimper. When the doctors told us you would never walk... Oh, my baby, I couldn't stand the guilt. I... I don't know why that made me into the monster that I am. Why I decided that hurting you was the only way I could face my shame. When you started walking, and then getting better and better at it, it was like you were mocking me. I was such a fool, a selfish fool, and now I, I lost you forever. I forgive you. You do? Yes, I forgive you for everything. I forgive you. I forgive you, Daddy. Well, that was the second trial where April had to face her greatest fear, which was her father. And, <coughs> and that kind of gives us a um, another thing where we were talking earlier. Uh, remember how April is apparently the daughter of the White Dragon? Well, apparently she was adopted, so we don't know who April's real father is. I mean, if her mother is the White Dragon, 
Now we know the dragons can assume human form, after all Cortez and um, Jacob McGowan were both in human form, so I guess we can assume the white dragon assumed human form and gave birth to April. Now I don't still doesn't tell us who April's father is, but it's I don't know. But that's where we are. So April has passed the second trial. Let's head on to the tower. The tower is very close now. For certain values are close anyway. Finally, I thought I'd never make it here. Oh, great. There's a large canyon circling the tower, and there doesn't seem to be any way across. Well, April, what do you always do when you get someplace you can't find your way across? And notice that our inventory has thinned out quite a bit at this point. Uh, one of the main things we're missing is we no longer have the picture of um, Charlie and Emma. wonder what happened to that. Oh well. Who's the only friend we have left? Hi, Crow. It worked! What? 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 Hello, old friend. April! What the heck? What happened? I used magic to, uh, magically transport you here. I should have known. Swirling blue lights never did anybody any good, that's for sure. And that cute little sparrow, oh, she's gonna be so upset when she wakes up and, uh... <laughs> hey, when did you learn to do magic? I picked it up on the way here. Listen, I need you to help me out. I need to find a way across this canyon and into that tower over there. Why don't you just flap your wings and fly then? <laughs> oh, that's funny! I kill myself! Flap your wings and fly! Oh, baby! Ooh, that's a zinger! I gotta write that down somewhere. Wait, wait a minute. Oh, <laughs> flap your wings and fly! <laughs> Jeez! Anyways, when did you ever need my help? Oh, sure, you brought me along, let me do your dirty work once in a while, but come on! You could have done just as well on your own. I mean, you just left me high and dry at the end there, didn't you? Just up and left without a word of goodbye. I didn't mean to leave you like that, Crow, but you couldn't come with me. Oh, sure. Use me, then leave me. Don't worry, I know how that works. I'm not half as innocent as you seem to think. But I thought we were friends. Crow, we are friends. Good friends. That why you gave me the name Crow? Oh, I thought it was nice, all right. Real ring to it. Until I found out what a crow actually is over there in Stark. Crow? Right. Crow. The sneakiest, dirtiest, most despised bird there is. They're like flying rats. You even have something called a scarecrow to chase us off with, don't you? I mean, crows are so stupid. They're scared off by straw people dressed in rags. <laughs> and that's the name you come up with? Crow? <laughs> bah! That's not... No? No excuses. I can't bear it. Oh, the pain. The pain. That's all I am to you, a flying flea bag? I'm sorry. I can't bear to look at you anymore. I gotta fly. Stay and shut up! But I you... knew that name because of a cartoon character I loved when I was a kid. His name was Crowboy. Crowboy? He was the star of a series of what we call animated cartoons. It's like puppet theater. You can watch on a canvas or a screen. Puppet theater. I love puppet theater. Crowboy was just the coolest bird there ever was. He was a crow and a cowboy. And he had a hat, and a lasso, and an albatross called Old Whitey that he rode on. He had an albatross? His own albatross? 
And every week he'd come to a new town where the bad guys were making life tough for everybody else. And he'd sort it out like a real hero. He was a hero? Crowboy? So that's why I called you Crow. I figured you're not a cowboy. So it'll be just Crow. And besides, I think crows are cool. Oh, damn. Get right. Dip. Dip. You know, damn. You know, I. Me and my big beak. I couldn't keep it shut, could I? I had to say something stupid. I'm so stupid, dumb, stupid, stupid, dumb, dumb, stupid. It was a misunderstanding, Crow. It could have happened to anybody, even good friends, especially good friends. Yeah, yeah, but, but, but I'm so stupid. Are you gonna keep beating yourself up, or are you gonna help me? Time's running short. Of course I'm gonna help you. Anything for you, April. Just tell old Crow what to do, and he'll do it. Like that. I can be a hero, too. Just like Crow Boy. Okay, let me think. Okay, and I have to ask, did April really have a favorite cartoon called Crow Boy, or did she just come up with that at the last minute to calm Crow down? Who knows? Well, oops. Crow always helps us do things, so let's send Crow to look down here. Crow, I need you to fly down into the canyon to see what's below the fog. Into the canyon? Below the fog? Are you scared? I didn't say that. It's just, well, fog clings to my feathers and, and... Would Crowboy do it? Crowboy would do it, but he'd be careful not to get hurt, and he'd come right back up again if he saw anything remotely dangerous. Of course! Okay. Hold tight, I'll be back soon. Hey, no crow flying away, just a fade to black. So what did you see, Crow? What was below the fog? You're not gonna believe me. What? I told you, you're not going to believe me. Just tell me what you saw. Nothing. Nothing? As in nothing out of the ordinary? No, as in nothing at all. The absence of anything. Below the fog, there was nothing. It was terrifying. Until you've seen what nothing looks like, you won't be able to fully appreciate something, anything at all. I used to hate this blue sand. I mean, blue sand. What the heck? Now, though, I love it. It's sand, and it's blue. It's something. Not like that. Nothing down there. It was freaky. So there's no way I can climb down, cross over, and climb up on the other side. You'll fall into the nothing. I'm telling you, I don't even think time passes down there. You'd be falling through nothing forever. Damn. Well, if we can't get down that way, where else can we go? What's over here? Crow, can you fly across the canyon to the base of the tower? Can a chick lay eggs? Well, I know you can't, but... Yeah, I can do that. Um, what was it you wanted me to do again? Just fly across the canyon and see if you can find any weird buttons or levers or something like that. What for? There must be a way to cross this canyon, and maybe there's a magical bridge that needs to be activated. I don't know, Crow. Just fly across and check it out, okay? Will do. Hang on. What am I saying? Of course you'll hang on. It's not like you have any other choice. And again, we fade to black while Crow goes off and does his thing, and... Okay, what'd you find out, Crow? What did you find? No bridge, that's for sure. But there's a well on the other side, on top of that conical sandstone staircase right below the tower. It looked magical. It had that no-good-stay-the-heck-away blue shimmer to it. So I didn't fly any closer. Who knows where I'd end up? That's got to be the well of making. Well, maybe it can be making us a bridge then. <laughs> <laughs> Making us a bridge! <laughs> I'm killing I'm killing today! You're easily amused, Crow. My brain's one-tenth the size of yours. What do you want from me? But maybe you got a point. Maybe the well of making can help us somehow. It was only a joke, April. I know, but still. Actually, that is what we need to do, so... Crow, I want you to get me some water from the well of making. What? Are you crazy? How am I supposed to carry water back from... 
Oh no, 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 no. There's no way I'm doing that. Come on, Crow. Your beak is perfect for the purpose. I don't need a lot of water and all you have to do is make sure you don't swallow. Hey, magic's got its upsides, I'm sure. I mean, where would social welfare be without magic? But magic water in my beak? No way. What if I did swallow? If I'm lucky, I'll just explode or something. If not, I've heard stories, April, and none of them are very nice. Magic's not a toy, nor is it a food, and it certainly doesn't belong in my beak. Please, time's running short and the balance is at stake. You've got to help me, Crow. Don't you want to be a hero? Hero? Sure. Stooge? No. Oh, curses and damnation and all things mean and ugly. Fine. I'll put my life on the line, tempt fate, and risk a certain and painful death by magical poisoning, if... If what? If you'll promise to pluck my fleas for the next, uh, year. One year? So honor and glory mean nothing to you? Not as much as a good flea plucking. No. Okay. Deal. Now, fly! Yikes! That yikes seems a little out of place there, but Crow does that a lot. A year of flea plucking. Okay, fine. How did it go? Oh, good. Oh, really what to do. What do I want you to do? I can't take the water, so you're gonna have to do whatever it is we need done with it. All right, move it. I'm over the fire, okay? Wow, a vegan thing. Okay, let me think about it for a second. You could have thought about that sooner, April, but... <sighs> Crow needs to go down into the canyon with this. I got an idea, Crow. Well? You said there was nothing down there, right? The absence of anything. Uh-huh. The water in your mouth is magical water from the well of making. Whoa. So what if we add the magic of making to nothing? What happens then? Um... Something, right? Well, 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 Something's better than nothing. Fly down there and spit the water out on top of the nothing. Then get out quickly. Something will happen, I'm sure of it. I'm just not sure what exactly. Now, I have to ask, this is how this is supposed to work. How do you do it without crow around? Seriously, how would she have done that without Crow? Or another oh. guardian? That's something alright. But what? Where's Crow? Crow! 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 Oh, please let him be alright wherever he is. Well, we can't worry about Crow right now, but let's cross the bridge. And we need to go up to here. Just the well of me. It's been a long journey getting here. This is it. The end of the road. Yes, All I, I have to do now is figure out how to get up into the tower. I thought I'd already passed the three trials. There's always something. I guess it's not supposed to be easy. Yes, April, it's been the longest journey, but we've made that joke enough times. What we have to do is, well, we need to go take a look at the well of making itself. I guess this must be the well of making. It's not as imposing as I thought it would be. Not even close. Yep, that's pretty much it. But now we use the disc on it. And a hand appears. Well, what do we do with a hand? And there we go. 
wasn't responding for a second there. I guess we touch it. That didn't work. <gasps> Fortunately, Adrian came along to save the day. we saw at the start of the game, if you remember. Thank God you came. I thought you were lost for good. My path here diverged from yours. You had to pass the three trials. You were right in warning me. This place is like a Freudian nightmare. The first psychologist to arrange field trips here will rake in a fortune. I mean, talk about shock therapy. It is a sacred place. Only the chosen few can pass through the desolation. But then why didn't my hand work on the Well of Making? I mean, I passed all the tests, right? That is a mystery. You are to be the 13th Guardian, are you not? The balance has picked you. Your hand should have unlocked the tower, like mine did. Why did it still react to your hand? Even though I left the tower, I am still the current Guardian. And I will continue to be, until you go through the ritual and take my place. Hold on. I think we're about to move. The tower is letting us in. Okay, there's somebody under the disc. Yes, it's Gordon Holloway, but how did he get there? I mean, how did he get there before them? Or get there without them seeing him? It... Okay. It's a little weird there, but okay. I never thought I would see this place again. It's cold. Was it always this cold? I do not know. When I was here last, I did not feel much at all. Well, I'm freezing. I spent more than 1,000 years in this tower, and yet I cannot remember ever feeling warm or cold. Being Guardian, there's just the balance and our duty to it. You didn't feel anything? There are no emotions. Emotions interfere with the balance. I was the conduit between magic and logic, between chaos and order. And I had to be clean. That sounds horrible. It never felt that way. I was content. As far as it was possible for me to be content. Until the very end, when I became restless. That's when you left the tower? I had no choice. The balance forced me out. I was polluting the flows that passed through me, through this room. And it was time for someone to succeed me. So now it's... it's my turn. To be Guardian. Are you afraid? I've never been so afraid in my life. A thousand years. Everything will be gone when I'm... When I'm done, my friends, my family, dead. My world probably changed beyond recognition. I know, April. I have experienced this myself. When I returned to Stark, I could not believe that all the things I knew, the memories of a life that I recalled as clearly as if it were only yesterday, they were all gone. I was lost, alone, dying. Until the vanguard picked me up from the street and imprisoned me. It shames me to say it, but that was a relief. To be fed, to sleep comfortably, to be warm. You have every right to be afraid. But consider this. Your sacrifice will be the salvation of mankind, of two worlds. What greater gift is there? What greater reward than to know you are like a god? Believe me, I could do without the reward. 
If there was any other way, I'd embrace it in a second. But I won't shy away from this either. If it is my destiny, then so be it. Good. To wish for the loss of dreams and emotions would be wrong. But to acknowledge it in the face of your fears... This proves you are ready. Okay. So... What now? What do I do? Just walk to the edge of the disk. The tower will know what to do. If you are the new guardian, the tower will embrace you. All right, here it goes. One thousand years. Now what? Nothing's happening. You are right. Then it is as I suspected. What? What did you suspect? That you are not the one chosen to take my place in the tower. You are not the 13th Guardian. But if I'm not, then... I think I may be able to answer that question, Miss Ryan. You! How, How the hell did you get here? You didn't think your little games back at the station would fool anyone, did you? Well, aside from those moronic and useless guards. It puzzles me why Mr. McAllen could be such a visionary and yet be so lacking in his comprehension of human nature to surround himself with brainless louts. Maybe because he wasn't human. He was not. That would explain a lot. If he was not human, then what was he? You mean, you didn't know? He was your boss, and you had no idea who you were working for. How pathetic can you get? Don't toy with me, child! Don't you dare toy with me! I... I... don't. I do not know what came over me. I'm not prone to anger. In fact, I'm usually quite incapable of it. Must be the environment that's... I don't feel quite right. Like there's something in here that's calling to me. What are you doing to me? I don't know what you're talking about, Gordon. No matter. I can ignore this. It's so hot in here. Don't you feel it? The heat? I'm freezing. Maybe you should lie down for a minute or two. <laughs> Maybe you should lie down, Miss Ryan. I actually have a good reason to be here. But you do not. After all, you are no longer a candidate in this race, are you? I may not become the new Guardian, but neither will you. The Balance will never accept you. Don't be so sure, April. I... Th that's your name, is it not? April? Yeah. I will be the Guardian. The Balance will have... No choice. Not with you and the previous guardian. Gone. And I'm... I'm... There's something... Here, isn't there? Someone's calling my name. Someone's... No. No. Not that. Not here. You brought it here, you stupid bitch! Stop! Well, remember, they told us that Gordon Holloway had split in two, and the other part of him was the Chaos Cloud? Fortunately, we had that. No! Stay away from me! Don't! No! Here from White. Oh, 
so startled, April. What happened to him? I... I'm... alive again. Y you gave me back my life. I did? You don't sound like yourself. Are you okay? I do sound like myself. And I'm better than I've ever been, April. I I'm whole again. So it worked? The joining of two halves? Magic and logic. Order and chaos. I'm in balance now. I am balance. And it's glorious. I'm sorry for what I did to you, April. And to you, sir, I I'm sorry for everything. It wasn't you. Not all of you, anyway. It was me. But it misguided me. I, I wish I could undo all the harm I've done to both worlds. Both as Gordon Holloway and as the Chaos Vortex. But I can't undo my actions. All I can do is make sure they'll never happen again. And the only way to ensure that is by becoming the Guardian. You? The Guardian? It's my destiny, April Ryan, not yours. I was born to be the Guardian. And although the Vanguard almost managed to prevent that from ever happening, they didn't succeed. And now, I'm ready. Thanks to you. But what about me? If I'm not going to be the Guardian, then who am I? That's something I cannot answer for you, April. Only you can do that. But I don't think the universe is done with you. You are important. Just not in the way you imagined. He speaks the truth, April. He is to be the Guardian now. It was always his destiny, even though it was taken from him by the Vanguard. We will begin the changing of the guards now, Gordon. And you, April. Thank you. Thank you for your sacrifice, your courage, your kindness. Okay, stop. You're making me feel very self-conscious. I only did what had to be done. Which is more than most people would have done. Your journey here will be remembered, April Ryan. Remembered and retold for all time. Right now, I'm only concerned about what's coming next. Where do I go now? Where can I go? That is your choice to make. But do not fret. This world will never hurt you again. How do I get back to Stark? Or Arcadia, for that matter? Walk. Walk until you are outside, and then go back inside. It is easy from here. You can go anywhere you wish. I guess, then, that this is... goodbye. Perhaps we will meet again. Yeah, why not? It's not an impossible thought. Anyway, you guys have an important job to get to. Don't let me hold you back. Thank you. Goodbye. Yeah, goodbye. Yeah, in some ways that's got to be a bit of a... You thought you were the Guardian. You thought you were going to be the most important person in the universe. And then, oh, you're just a person who... So that's the end of that. Funny. I feel almost melancholy, despite everything that's happened. I'm actually going to miss this... this adventure. After all, what am I doing now? Going back to school? Live like nothing has happened? Like I'm just a... a normal person? Well, it's a long way home. I'll figure it out before I get there. Wherever there is. Well, you're still a shifter, April, I hey, assume. Hey, April, wait up! Where are you going? Wait! Don't leave me here! You're still a shifter, April. I'm sure that it hasn't been taken away from you. And, um... I'm sure that there's going to be plenty of adventures in the future for you. But anyway, this is the end of The Longest Journey. I hope all of you have enjoyed the trip. I hope you this little walkthrough has helped you. And, um... There are two more games coming out after this, at least. There is The Longest Journey Dreamfall, which is not April Ryan's story. It's the story of a woman named Zoe. And 
the new game, which, as I record this, is coming out next month, called Dreamfall Chapters. And so the story goes. Is that it? But whatever happened to April Ryan? And did that man, Gordon Halloway, become a good and just guardian? That is the end. If you had studied your scriptures, child, you would know that the 13th guardian was the last guardian to watch over the balance. Was it after his reign that the worlds were reunited? During his reign. Not long after the events I have just described. Please tell us more. Tell us what happened to April and about the reunification of Stark and Arcadia. I think I will save those stories for another night. I'm feeling tired, and it is late. I would see you out, but my legs... Thank you, Lady Alvani. We'll find our way out ourselves. Thank you again for your hospitality and for your story. And so the story goes. How strange it was to tell it again. To remember April Ryan. That was such a long, long time ago. And now, now my story is almost over as well. Eh, uh, you're as healthy as ever. You still got a lot of life left in you. Wish I was half as lucky. Don't say that. You're okay. You can still fly. Fly, yes. <laughs> But those cute little birds, they don't seem to appreciate that. They're holding out for their young, handsome suitors, and they don't have time for an old crow like me. Well, you got me, crow. Isn't that something? I guess. Yeah, sure. <laughs> oh, of course. Unless you're not planning on going out there again, are you? On a new adventure? Cause, I don't know, I'm kinda happy staying here. Don't worry, Crow. I think our adventuring days are over. But that doesn't mean we can't tell stories, does it? No, definitely not. Tell me one. Tell me the one about the young, beautiful warrior princess who single-handedly won the War of the Balance. Hmm, I don't remember it quite like that, Crow, but let's see. This story begins a long, long time ago, when Stark and Arcadia were still to be reunited, and the Guardian was still on his throne. And thus ends the longest journey. I guess it should be pretty obvious now, although the game never states it, I'm pretty sure that Lady Alvane is April Ryan, which means there's time travel involved too. Of course, we're not going to go there. But anyway, that was the end of The Longest Journey. I hope everyone enjoyed the trip, I hope all of you had a good time, and who knows, maybe someday we'll do Dreamfall and Dreamfall chapters just to complete the trilogy. Who knows? Until then, I will let the credits roll, and I am Dennis, I am Tan Staffel the Paleo Gamer, and I will see you next time.